day, brothers and sisters. Immigration, right? A tough subject right now. And it's a touchy subject right now. But since I'm an immigrant myself, I want to touch it. Uh, not what you think. <laughs> I want to look into the process. And in a new mini series, Coming Canadians, we're going to discuss and partner up with Canada Central. That's the immigration uh, consulting company that was gracious enough to uh, let us look into deeper into the process and more closer. And we're going to have some interviews here and we're going to show you and you're going to decide if it's good or bad. But it uh, has to be good because, you know, I'm an immigrant myself and uh, my whole family is. And we've been here for 30 years contributing to this country. And this country has been contributing to our growth. And, you know, Canada is built on immigrants. And some say it's the engine that keeps the country running. Some say it's something new. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. And today, actually, we're going to try something new. Uh, as you know, our show is located here in Canada, Montreal, Quebec. And um, as we talked about before in the show, Canada is built on immigration. And there's right now a still ongoing immigration to Canada. My family came here almost 30 years ago, started basically a new life from scratch, like most immigrants do. You know, some immigrants come here already with money or some business in place. Uh, my family had to come here from scratch. And uh, me and my sisters went to school in North America, not necessarily in Canada, but eventually came back to Montreal and... Uh, Started our life here, you know, started families, bought houses, <laughs> etc. And um, it's interesting to us to see because the landscape have changed. Uh, the Canada for sure is not the same country as it was 30 years ago, uh, but it's still wide open to immigrations and the immigrants are coming here still. A lot of immigrants are coming here still. And they're coming for, var for various reasons. And... Uh, Basically, this country, and you can see it actually dynamic throughout the world. And we are curious still, why is this going on? Geopolitically, if we read the news, it tells us one thing. But instead of you know reading the newspaper and hoping this is the correct source, we'll go directly to the source. And we want to interview people and ask them about their stories. Uh, why they come here, uh, how they come here, and what are their goals here. For Canada specifically, because this is our home, we are Canadians here, and new immigrants coming here, bringing their energy, uh, bringing their resources uh, to help us build this home to become a better country for all of us to live. So, without further ado, today we have Jose Francisco. Sorry, Jose, I was talking for way too long. Introduce yourself. Well, hello, my name is Jose Francisco, and I came here to Canada to study cyber physical engineering. Cyber physical engineering is basically the mix of engineering and the physical world, which basically you could summarize it in the smart homes. How long ago did you come? Right now I have nine months in Canada. Oh, and right now I'm studying it uh, in UCAM. Where do you come from? I come from Honduras. Why did I choose Canada and why would I go out of my country? Why would I go so far and travel all the way up here? One of the main reasons is the unemployment rate and the situation in my country. Sadly, it's not offering the life that I want to live. It does not have the opportunities that I want for my life, and it definitely is not a safe place. So I came to Canada in search of a new life, not only a new life, but opportunities. And I've definitely seen that here in Canada, you can put in the work and you'll see results. It's very different to my country. Interesting, and I think that's why most immigrants come here in the first place. I'm glad you're sharing it with us. Uh, so what was the most... Uh Tell us about the journey to Canada. What was the most challenging uh, part of it? Well, coming to Canada is a very lengthy process. But I would say that the biggest, the biggest obstacle I found was the proof of payment. Definitely. Before even starting your process to get the study permit, you need to give a proof of payment from the college. So I think that was the biggest obstacle I found on my way. So uh, you get a student permit. How do you get a student permit? What, is that, how, what does that even entail? Well, it entails a lot of forms and documents, definitely. And a lot of anxious waiting. So you, to get a student permit, you need a proof of payment. Yes. To start the process of the study permit, you need uh, the proof of payment from the college. Like You need to be accepted into the college and the proof of payment At to even time. start the process. To even start the process. Yes. So obviously, like, you had to learn this from somewhere. How did you learn this? Like, you, you don't just wake up in the morning and like, oh, I want to come to Canada and I need a, um, I want to go to Canada as a student because it's one of the ways to immigrate. And then, um, 
you know, how did you discover all this information? This is not this is not something you read on Facebook usually, right? <laughs> well, sometimes you can find stuff in Facebook, but not this time. Uh, well, me, I did some uh, independent research and I studied a lot and really tried to find out about the process. Mm-hmm. And uh, while I was searching for colleges, I found that the median was like twelve to $18,000 per year. Mm-hmm. But luckily, when I started to research these colleges, I, I was already in aid and services of Canada Central which they opened me another opportunity that I hadn't seen. So I did research on my own and found out most stuff about the process. But what really nailed it down definitely was the aid of Canada Central because I didn't know that I could just pay for a semester, present that as a pay as a proof of funds, and then come here to Canada and work to finish the first year payment. Wow, this I is didn't even know you could work while you were studying. What is Canada Central? Canada Central is a company that basically offers a wide range of services. But mostly, I think what sets them apart, apart from, of course, all of their experience and, uh, well, let me tell you this. They have a team that definitely has a lot of cases under their belt. Like the agents are, you when you're calling, when you're in call with them, you can feel the knowledge. Like you literally feel the heavy impact of their words and how they know all about the immigration laws and regulations. It's crazy. So it's not just copy-paste service. They actually know what they're doing. No, of course. Yeah, and you feel it in the way they do recommendations and when they uh, give you instructions on what to do with the papers. And it's really a tailored experience. What I really think separates them from any other company is that they tailor their services to you. An example, like everyone has their own cases. Your case is not going to be the same as mine. But they really do nail down uh, a real service where they tailor their service to your specific needs. So are you working now as a part-time uh, employee, as a part-time student to be able to pay for your school? Yes. Actually, I was really, I had really good luck with that because they removed the regulations on only 20 hours maximum for international students. And now I can work actually full-time. So I, can, I am not limited to 20 hours a week, but uh, I can work full-time. So I actually right now have two part-time jobs, one after school and on weekends. Wow. And you're able to do all three things, study and work. It's hard, but it's doable. Is that because you're looking forward to opportunity? It's an opportunity in itself to do so, right? A lot of people are still looking for the job all over the world, not just in Canada, but Canada presents this opportunity to actually go to school. Um, and school, is that what is that what you expected to come here? Is that you're actually learning something? Absolutely. The quality of the schools is amazing. I was absolutely stunned and flabbergasted by the amount of information and the quality of the teachers. It's a 180. It's a, it's a really good system. Honestly, me, I am not disappointed at all. I'm actually surprised. It, it surpassed my expectations. Uh, what advice would you give to the students in obtaining a permit, a student permit, as you're searching for the school? When you're going to get your study permit, if I have to give advice, it would be to start as early as you can to search for information. And uh, also make yourself time and save money for the process. Because it does cost, uh, it does cost more than a little. So do give yourself time to make the process and get the documents, and also save a little money for the process itself. How long did you take to get an approval for the permit? It was about six to seven months. Wow, that's not that's not little, right? And that's a little bit of cost advice. So you have to do some savings. Yeah, but it's like an investment into the future. Right. Yes. Yes, it is definitely. Uh, now, sure. thing is, it's uh, it doesn't sound like much. It's just half a year, but when you put your life on hold to wait for the study permit, that's when every day that goes by feels like a year. And how did you feel when you finally got it? Oh my God! When uh, my agent Victor called me and uh, to confirm about the study permit, I was about to cry, man. You have no idea. <laughs> And I'm I'm happy you're sitting here in front of me now because is is it is Canada what you expected? It's what I expected and much more, definitely. Montreal is a beautiful city. It, there's a lot to explore. Like I, I I don't think that even in 20 years from now I'll be able to like know Montreal from top to bottom. It's crazy the amount of places that I found. Even yesterday that I went out, I found two new spots that I didn't know about. It's crazy the amount of activities, of places, of parks. I really love the parks. They have ducks sitting around. 
I had never had the experience of actually like feeding bread to ducks, just so you get the picture. And so getting all of these experiences and all of this basically new culture, it's a crazy change. So it's been more than what I expected. I can't ask for more. It's beautiful. What well, is there no ducks in Honduras? Uh, ducks, well, not as here. Not like here. We mm -hmm. mostly have just have like pigeons and crows, but not ducks. Because they ate all the ducks, right? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happens. We have like, I, I, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there's like humongous. If you've never been to Canada, Montreal specifically, there's humongous geese walking around, and nobody touches them. They like so obnoxious. They walk around like. Anywhere else in the world, it'll be like dinner. <laughs> you know, here it's a staple of uh, Canada. It's it, it is like a pigeon. They they have actually they are bigger nuisance than pigeons because you know they. Okay, I'm not. This is a friendly show. We're not going to get X-rayed. <laughs> But there's a lot of them, uh, and um, it is right here outside our studio. We have a national preserve. It's a bird sanctuary where you can go like take a picture of an eagle, find other birds. Uh, that are a very um, uh, unique to this uh, particular area. Um, and it's right outside our house. It's a national natural preserve. It's it's really crazy. In terms of nature here in Canada, it is an, um, an amazing thing. Um, tell me more about, I'm curious, tell me more about Canada Central. Like, um, why actually specifically did you choose And did you look for other immigration uh, companies first, or is it something that you just fell in by luck? Yes, no. Me, if I if I want to give myself some credit, is that I do a lot of research and I don't do any decisions without prior information. So I did do a lot of research in what come in when it comes to like uh, immigration services, but I chose Canada Central mostly because after the first meeting that I had with them, I scheduled a meeting, and after that first meeting. I knew that they were going to provide a good service. I won't mention any other names, but some other companies that uh, I did that first meeting with, I didn't really feel like they were trying to help. Like you said, you mentioned a copy-paste company. I really felt it like that. I really felt that way. That they just give you, like, the first meeting didn't really feel helpful. And it was just like, yeah, yeah, this, yada, 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 take this and pay for the service if you actually want to, like, want us to help you. But with Canada Central, it was very different. They were very polite. They were very professional. And after the first meeting, they already gave me a lot of information. So I knew that it was a quality service after that first meeting. So how did they help you specifically? Well, they helped me by providing me a ton of information I didn't know, specifically the one about work. That, that was a great help. But uh, also guiding me through the process of getting the documents. In my country, it was a lengthy process to get the documents for the study permit. But they provided me with a ton of information. They guided me through the process of getting the documents. And uh, they also gave me, I really appreciate that they called me once a week to like update me on the status of my application. That was great. As I said, when you're waiting for the study permit, every day feels like a year. And when they call you, like you know that at least you'll get a call once a week. And that call, oh my God, it makes the world just come off your back. Sounds like they did a lot for you, actually. They did. Uh, it, it, and it's true. When you have support, I, I always notice that like it's easier to go for life when you have some guidance. Um, although they do say the best lessons you learn on your own, in this case, when you, when you enter in a new country, there's just so much information. And uh, oftentimes, you don't know where to begin. Sometimes the process is straightforward, but it's not often the case. And specifically, like you said, even in your case, you came in here and the immigration law has changed while you were here. You were able mm -hmm. to obtain more hours of work, which dramatically helped in you with life. I mean, it's challenging to have three things you have to do. And look, I have three things to do. But with the help of Canada Central, they are just focused. They're specialized on immigration services. So if anything changes on real time, they'll notify me and tailor my the, their service to me. That's what I really appreciate because I cannot be all day just checking regulations and see updates and see immigration laws and whatever, but they can. And with the help from them, I can do a lot of things at the same time. Oh, you so, can focus on your things. Exactly. Right? You can you come here for whatever purpose. It's, it's like, okay, uh, Glenn, remember our friend Jesse? He's like, why would I, uh, like, I make uh, 150 bucks an hour or $500 an hour, whatever, whatever his price is. 
And he's like, why would I uh, spend, uh, you know, doing something uh, for free? Like I could hire somebody for 75 bucks an hour uh, to do some work for me uh, a few hours a week and I can still continue to make money on my own. But if I don't, I'm actually losing money. Mm -hmm. I'm actually losing money. I'm losing time. So there is definitely a benefit to hiring professional to do the work so you can focus on the things that task. Any advice for the students moving to Canada? Like in your specific, you came from a much warmer country, obviously. <laughs> Honduras is way warmer than Canada. Yes. Montreal specifically. What is uh, any advice you can give to any students coming in here? Well, definitely don't be discouraged by the cold. One of the more uh, prevalent com comments that I heard while I was in Honduras was people like saying, oh, no, the cold. Oh, my God. You'll, uh, fr you'll die freezing in winter. You'll, will, you won't like it and whatever. Don't be discouraged by the cold. It's uh, a lot better than you actually think. In my case, I would recommend that you buy a good winter coat and th that you enjoy being outside. The key is in layers. Just put a lot of stuff in. And if, you, if you're feeling hot, just take something off. It, the, the key is in layers. But definitely enjoy winter. Enjoy the seasons. It's a big change of pace. I've never actually had fall, winter, summer, spring. I've just had like summer my whole life. So coming here and seeing the <laughs> seeing the leaves change color, it was amazing. It it's literally like a painting. So I would recommend that you enjoy the process and be grateful every day for seeing new stuff, especially in winter. Oh, my first day of winter was crazy. I did every activity of winter in the first day, doing snow angels, a snow fight, a snowman. I did everything first day, but you'll definitely enjoy it. Do be careful though, and. Uh, Take measures for, example, winter's dangers. Like you can slip and fall and maybe break something. So I definitely recommend buying the spikes for your shoes. They're a given. And uh, well, mostly that. Don't be discouraged by your situation. Actually, it's a good point. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the thing is, it's not just about layers, but you're right. It's wearing proper clothes. And don't worry about getting proper clothes in Honduras. When you come to Montreal, take your time, get a recommendation, get proper shoes, which is important, get proper hat, gloves, jackets, and all that stuff. Yeah, it's not the cheapest investment, but this is like winter tires. You have to have winter tires on cars here in Canada by law. But all those things you will learn here, and you don't need to really worry about it. But definitely, if you come in the winter time, bring at least something warm. Um, we kind of went way too long. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Jose, for sharing your story. Uh, we'd like to have more of you. How do you recommend people uh, contacting Canada Central? You can find Canada Central by typing in Google canadacentral.ca or uh, you can call them as well. Right now, I don't remember their number right now, but... Uh, we'll post it. We'll put it on the, in the description. description. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, so you can communicate with them uh, that way. You can schedule a meeting and then you can start the process just as I did. Do you see yourself uh, living in Canada, Montreal? Do you want to move to Toronto, Vancouver? How do you? What does your future look like in the next 5, 10, 30 years? Hopefully, I'll stay here. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm given the chance, I'll stay here. But um, in the end, it's just I want to stay in Canada. I don't want to go back. And uh, wherever the opportunity is, is wherever I'll go. And Canada Central is helping you to be on top of your paperwork so you make sure that you stay, uh, so you file proper paperwork at proper times to help you inch along towards permanent residency and then citizenship? Yes, absolutely. I'm basically just filling papers and they're uploading everything. Their lawyers are on time. Uh, they're providing the best service, honestly. And you feel, you feel very secured about the journey towards becoming a Canadian citizen, right? Yes. Of course, there's always this anxiety of, oh, something might happen. But uh, I feel pretty safe about it. Yes. I'm in Canada Central's hands. If they got me here, then they'll get me farther. Well, that's amazing. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to Canada Immigration Tales with Alex Saz. We actually are curious. We're going to bring different professionals and different people of different backgrounds from different countries to share the experiences of coming to Canada and staying here and uh, how it can help you because, you know, we're all brothers and sisters here living on earth. They shouldn't, in my opinion, there shouldn't be any borders. In my opinion, there shouldn't be any passports. If you want to go to any country, you should be able to. There shouldn't be any countries at all. But unfortunately, this is not how it is in this world. 
So we're here to share the stories to help you achieve that. And this is for now. We'll see you on the next one.